Hello everyone, welcome to this episode on how you can actually delegate a subdomain to Route 53. So this is going to be a very quick video because I got a couple of uh, questions with this regard. Now before that, let me quickly uh, talk about the problem that we have and uh, what is the solution. Now, uh, when you actually develop a web application on AWS, it could be a S3 static web application or you might be using Beanstalk uh, to host your Windows application or ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core application or PHP, whatever the application that you host on uh, AWS. When you are going on to production, you probably want to attach a custom domain for that, right? So what we basically do then is to uh, go to Route 53, right? You can find the Route 53. Uh, so Route 53 is the DNS service for AWS. You can easily go to uh, Route 53 and then uh, go to Hosted Zone. So you can click here and then you will start creating a hosted song for your site. Now this hosted zone name is pretty much uh, the same as your uh, domain that you have already bought for your uh, application. Uh, for example, let's say uh, you have uh, bought a uh, domain. Let's call it example.com, right? And uh, and since this is publicly accessible, so you set it as a public hosted zone and you create a hosted zone, right? Now there's an error for this example.com. Let me add a different one. Let's say hello uh, world dot com right and then you go ahead and create it so when you create it uh, it's going to create an hosted zone for you there you go and it's going to give you some name server records now do you see uh, name server records now these name server records are used to do the dns query resolution for any dns queries for your website so it could be hello world.com it could be a subdomain like app dot hello world.com and so on so when you get those requests name servers are used to convert those uh, web addresses which is readable uh, for the human into an ip address so that is basically what name servers are doing so in order to get that thing actually working with your custom domain you need to go to your domain provider now aws also from route 53 you can register a domain but if you have registered a domain using a different provider for example i have registered a domain here in namecheap.com right so i bought this domain called awslearner.online right or this could be godaddy or any other uh, domain registrar where you registered your domain so what you basically have to do here is to uh, go into your domain and dns settings and you know, you will see a section for you to add a uh, custom DNS. So you can click here, custom DNS, and then you can replace the Route 53 uh, hosted zone name servers here. You can uh, copy these name servers one by one. You can copy here and paste this one. And again, you will copy the second one. And you're going to paste the second one, add, add additional name servers. And similarly, you will add all these uh, four name servers so what then happens is all the queries for this particular domain aws learners dot online will be resolved by the route 53 name, name servers right now this is actually the recommended way but there's a small problem if you actually have configured let's say a email server let's say with namecheap.com so you can like configure your email like i think this is the one or if there is an application that is already running outside AWS, let's say maybe a different subdomain, uh, online, maybe that is pointing to uh, your product website, which is maybe not running in AWS. So in these cases, when you replace the AWS hosted zone name servers for your parent domain, which I showed you earlier using custom domain uh, DNS here, those application will not work. Your email server so is not going to work or your any other application that is uh, outside AWS will not work. So how do we tackle this issue? Now there are multiple ways. Now one of the ways is URL forwarding. Right? You can easily set up URL forwarding. You can say if uh, the uh, domain name is app.awslearners.online, forward it to maybe to your Beanstalk environment endpoint or Beanstalk application endpoint. You can do that easily with URL forwarding and URL forwarding supports both masking 
as well so that means uh, it is not going to change the original url that the user have entered so that is called you know masking but this masking is not really uh, recommended by google and google search so google is going to discourage those uh, url forwarding with masking and one other way is to uh, you can set up a cname dns record for example you can go to advanced dns in um, namecheap.com and you can create a new dns record here and i can create a cname record there you go this is a cname and i can say if it is app right that means app.awslearners.com i can point this to my aws resource endpoint for example beanstalk environment or the application endpoint right now this is really a good solution but i'm going to suggest an even better solution for this which is called subdomain delegation right now imagine i have a beanstalk application running in aws right now let me first uh, take my example uh, hosted song deleted okay i delete this hosted song hello world okay so i'll go to beanstalk okay now in beanstalk i have this web app running right so if i click on to this now uh, this is the url or the endpoint uh, for my beanstalk website i'll copy this i'll I hit enter there you go so I have an ASP.NET application running on Beanstalk. But uh, do you see uh, the URL is the Beanstalk URL, which is not user friendly. So I want to replace this with app.awslearners.online. Now I'm not going to hit enter because it's not going to uh, show this web page since we haven't set it up yet. So this is what I want to do. Like if I type app.awslearners.online, this uh, Beanstalk environment should load. But I already have, let's assume, awslearner.online already have an email server attached or running using uh, Namecheap. So I can't like replace the entire name servers. Now let me delete this one, which I don't need. Okay. So how am I going to do this? So first of all, I need to create a D hosted zone in AWS Route 53. So I'll go to hosted zone and I uh, go to click create hosted zone. And this hosted zone name should exactly match my domain name. That is awslearners.com, right? You can type here. Uh, don't type this name because uh, you have to type your own DNS uh, domain name. And click create. So I have already created it. So this is the one, awslearner.online. And then you go into that. And then you will find the name server records here. So then what I'm going to do here is I will go to my domain register, which is Namecheap, and I go to advanced DNS settings. And instead of a CNAME record, I'm going to create a name server record here, NS record. Now, even in GoDaddy or any other providers, and they, for the most part, they support name servers. So in this case, I can type the subdomain, the prefix part. In this case, I want to say app.awslearners.loadline. So the host uh, is app. And then I have to replace the uh, name servers that I have here. So I'm going to copy one of that and paste it and add that, right? And I'll add another name server record, NS record. So it is for the same host. And I will copy the second one, add it and save it. Similarly, I will add the other two as well. Okay, now I added these name server records only to my subdomain. You see, only to this app.awslearners.online subdomain, right? Everything else, including my Apex domain or the parent domain, are using the uh, Namecheap.com uh, name servers. So my email servers will still work as usual. But if someone type in the domain name app.awslearners.online, that will use the name servers from AWS. Now this gives me a lot of good benefits. Now I can actually use alias record, which is specific DNS records for AWS. So I'm going to create a create record set. So I will match the domain or the subdomain, which is app.awslearners.com. 
then I'll pick uh, IPv4 address then I select Elias yes now this is a specific DNS record for AWS and when we are using Elias DNS records AWS is actually not going to charge you for DNS queries which is a really good one right and there are other benefits for Elias records as well. I'll, I'll post a link to the documentation so you can look at that but here I'm going to go ahead and pick the Elias record or the Elias endpoint for my Beanstalk environment which is this one awesome then I'll click create there you go now it is properly connected so uh, we need to wait maybe like maximum of 48 hours until this DNS propagation happens and once it is completed I technically should be able to load my Beanstalk web application using this app.awslearner.online let me just try it not sure if it works there you go it, it actually resolved now furthermore I can attach ACM certificates uh, for this app.awslearner.online this subdomain and enable HTTPS or TLS and the best part is my mail servers will still work now let me show you one thing real quickly now if I go ahead and replace app.www. Now this query is going to resolve with name chip name servers. So if I hit enter, I should probably see the default message for a park domain. There you go. So only my app subdomain is resolved from AWS name servers. Okay, so this is what I want to show you guys. I hope this will be helpful. So if you like these videos, please make sure you subscribe. So you will be notified as soon as I release another video. Thanks guys. Have a good day.